Worldem. We're very happy to be here today. Um, Worldem is the global elevation model, and we'll be explaining more about that. Um, so we have uh, three people to uh, present this to you and answer your questions and at the end. Um, firstly, I'd like to introduce you to Bernard Brenner, who is the new head of GEO Intelligence at Airbus Defence and Space. Um, and this is his first time at UNT, so we're also excited to have him here for this. Um, and Andreas Roslark, who is the business manager <coughs> at SAR at Airbus Defence and Space, of course. And last but not least, Gertrude Riegler, World End Product Manager. Um, so firstly, uh, Bernard will pr do the pr presentation, and um, then we'll have uh, question and answers at the end for about 15 minutes. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, let Bernard get started then. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this press briefing here at GeoInt in Tampa. So, um, reaching new heights, that's the title of our presentation, and it's, uh, it's not just new heights, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a new name for us, it's Airbus. Uh, we are very proud to, to be now officially under the name of Airbus. So, it's also under a new company, Airbus, Airbus Defense and Space. So that's for the first time that we are branding and, uh, with this new name here at GeoInt. So we're excited and we have a lot of news to share with you. There's not so much change for Geo Information Services, which was formerly a, a business division of Estrim Services. So we became now a program line of uh, Airbus Defense and Space. Just like many other program lines, the Airbus 400M, the Eurofighter, the satellites, or uh, let's say all the electronic business. So we are one of them, of uh, one of these uh, program lines. Of course, uh, um, this gives us many, many new opportunities. It's just, it's not just about branding. It's not just about a new name. There's a real rationale behind. And this rationale is quite uh, deep. The opportunities in Airbus Defense and Space are, are, are very big in, with our colleagues from commercial aircraft, with our colleagues from the helicopter division, or uh, what already has existed, with our colleagues from Cassidian or for in the satellite system. So today, if someone is purchasing a new satellite, from our colleagues from satellites, we can take we can take full care of the services behind, and so it's it's a complete value chain. Some words as an introduction. 2013, I think, was an exciting year for us. It was the year of our turnaround. It was a year with a lot of growth. We grew by 10 percent. It's a year. It was a year of a huge successes, mainly with Playard, where we took some nice contracts, uh, Google, GeoNorth, some more to could be mentioned. Of course, it was also the breakthrough of our VHR uh, with uh, with Playard, where we took some uh, market share from Digital Globe, and uh, I, I think we're not yet done. I think we're we're still hungry. Uh, to, to go for these market shares. So 2014 will be a different year. We started quite well and uh, I think uh, uh, this year we want to boost our SAR capabilities. That's why we are here. We are here to present you this new game changer which is called Well Done. I think for those who are familiar with uh, Geo Intelligence no big news. I think we are the we are the only one in the market having the HR VHR. We do have optical and SAR satellites. So Spot Seven will be launched quite soon. Uh, we are quite strong in data and solutions. I think last year it was about 30 percent of our turnover. We already did with uh, with solutions. So it's not just about selling data. So this is something we want to we want to address where we have ambition, where we want to grow. And again, uh, Airbus Defense and Space gives us many opportunities in this respect for our solution business. Of course.
course, uh, the data management is something we take care of. We do have uh, solutions inside our, our uh, geo-intelligence group. Customer balance. We are quite well customer-based uh, balanced. We do have about 70 customers for our 70% of turnover. That's uh, quite easy to, to, to memorize. Um, that's not the case for Digital Globe. I think we are, we are quite strong in, in this respect. We are also quite balanced, quite well balanced regionally. Because uh, today we are already, uh, we are present in, in, all, in all parts of this world. We have about 15 companies in, 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 in geo-intelligence all over. And our revenues are quite uh, well uh, uh, balanced in, in, in this world. So with this kind of, uh, with these words of introduction, I'm, I'm really happy to have you here to share with you uh, this launch and we are proud to announce the, the, the official launch of the Commer Commercial World Dam. This is a game, game changer and I hand over to Andreas now to give you some more details about World Dam. Yeah, thanks uh, Bernard. Uh, uh, welcome for everybody from my side as well. So what I would like to do is to give you a little deeper dive into the uh, Wildam product uh, to make you familiar with the actual product. So what does Wildam mean? So four key points here. We have a standardized global DEM, which means that it is a seamless homogeneous elevation model, um, pole to pole, covering the whole landmass of the Earth, about uh, 150 million square kilometers. Sorry about that. Um, and the, all the data is coming from one unique uh, source, which is the TerraSRX and Tandemax satellite formation. Unrivaled quality, so the uh, world dam will be unique in, in quality. So we have a 12 meter pixel spacing, 12 meter posting product. Uh, at least if you consider, or unrivaled quality, at least if you consider that this is really a true global product, not local or regional. In addition, we have the um, accuracy of a new dimension. So actually that means in, in, in fact, in numbers, we are down to like four meter uh, vertical accuracy, op, um, um, uh, horizontal uh, uh, accuracy and absolute and um, vertical uh, accuracy relative. We can even go down to um, less than two meters, of course, depending on the slope. Did you repeat that? I'm sorry, did you say four meters horizontal? Uh, I'm sorry, it is uh, four meter uh, vertical accuracy ab absolute, I'm sorry for that, and two meter uh, vertical accuracy relative. So the fourth bullet point would be easy and instant access. So the, the final goal of the, of the uh, World Dam mission is to have an off-the-shelf product. This is of course a little bit down the road. For the moment we will have um, all the imagery, the input imagery collected and um, based on uh, client requests and on, off, on, on internal initiatives we will process and put the information, put the actual dam into a world dam database where step by step the data is available off the shelf from now on. So the, the combination of these factors here is really key. So you have uh, the global coverage, it's a true global coverage, pole to pole. You have the unique quality and accuracy, as well as um, a quick availability of the information. Just comparing the World Dam to other data sources, which you well know, so we have the SRTM 90 meter dam looking like that, compared to the SRTM 30 meter, and then compared to our uh, current 12 meter pixel spacing World Dam. So this is the comparison of all the three of us, and you can see the increased level of detail of the uh, well Dam product. You can easily identify um, sharp outline, the rivers, what you can see is the, the outlines and the edges of wooden areas. You can see lakes, you can see roads and streets. And if you follow the river up to the north, um, before it hits, uh, hits the lake, you can see an actual dam over there. Another sample telling you a little bit about the detail of the uh, the level of detail of the world dam. So this is a, a, a geo cell with, uh, of, of Minnesota, and that's of course a small snippet of it. Uh, what you can see 
Um, this is really just the World Dam Elevation Model, not an actual image. You can see the highway, the highway jun junctions and other roads, smaller roads that are really access to the highway. On both sides of the highway you can see rivers, you can see wooden areas uh, close to the rivers. Um, on the right side, uh, at the river, close to the river, you can see lines of trees, so very, very, very much well, high level of detail that you can see in, in the World Dam. Another slide to um, regarding the level of detail here. Um, what you see here is a comparison between the weld dam on the left side and the lighter dam on the right side. What needs to be mentioned here is, of course, you can see the increased quality of the lighter dam, but this is just truly local. It's based on optical airborne imagery and only uh, available locally, while this is a true global um, elevation model and the level of detail is at least coming close to what LIDAR offers on a local basis. Also the height values here, we see total height values here are very very similar so we're just uh, having seeing a one meter offset from the world dam height values to the LIDAR, LIDAR dam. Having talked about the um, um, position of the World Dam, um, this really allows you to gain a lot of terrain knowledge, uh, not only, but of course, uh, um, very important here for intelligence applications. So the World Dam is a real good foundation layer for all your uh, intelligence data and products. So it's homogeneous, like we said earlier, it's standardized uh, and it's globally, so you have reliable and precise <coughs> sort of layer and can optimize all your uh, systems and equipments like, like aircraft systems, like vehicles or maybe simulators and so on and so forth. So you have a great terrain knowledge uh, which um, your missions, your mission planning and your mission operations can benefit from. So all in all, summarizing that, um, it's really an, an approved responsiveness and efficiency, efficiency especially for the defense and security missions here. So this is a small movie, it takes like two and a half hours, so... How old? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Minutes. Yeah, I, I'm no, so sorry. Don't fall asleep. <laughs> so, show you a little bit about the applications and the quality of the world then, as well. So military mission planning, of course, we talked about that just the slide before. Decision ma making, um, where do I want to go uh, with my troops, with my convoys, which is the best uh, best way to guide them, to lead them. Um, making uh, sure that you have effective mission operations. Again, the uh, quality 12 meter pixel spacing uh, compared to SRTM 30 meter. One application would be flight route planning, uh, in this case for a helicopter, of course also works for aircraft uh, and low level flight aircraft. And in addition to that, of course, landing zone identification and planning. Earlier, I'm very precise, pole to pole, um, unrivaled quality and accuracy <coughs> on, a, on a global scale. Can also be used for imagery or rectification um, to have a foundation layer for any geo uh, systems. And of course, targeting would be an application, line of sight, and analysis of slopes for your uh, mission planning, route planning, and convoys. Also, smart weapon systems, UAVs, will also benefit from the uh, World Dam. And then, yeah, mission planning also for disaster response, of course.
so far with the uh, official movie, at least not two and a half hours, so just two and a half minutes. Um, yeah, a little bit of uh, small information at the end of that short presentation. So um, the World Dam is really the product that is coming out of the so-called Tandem mission. Um, and the mission goal has been, has always been, and of course still is, the seamless global elevation model at a 33 accuracy level. Um, how we do achieve that, um, we have two radar satellites in space. One of them is called Terrasar X since 2007. The other one, Tandem X, since 2010. We brought both of the satellites in a very, very close and unique formation. So they come close at like even less than 200 meters uh, in sometimes. So it's, it's really very close. And what way, what we, uh, they fly a formation that we call the bistatic formation or helix <coughs> formation, which is that the satellites not only orbit the Earth, but actually also, also orbit each other to make sure that they would never cross the path of the other satellite. So that's why we call it the helix formation. Um, yeah, the uh, final um, quality of the World Dam uh, is, is, uh, is a result of different factors here. So it's not only the fact that we have quality controls within the processing and every editing step, uh, some manuals, some, some uh, automated. We're, it already starts with the whole satellite imagery collection. So you have two satellites that are very precise in orbit. So that fly a very precise path, high geolocation and high, and high orbit accuracy. And then you have in addition to that um, uh, multiple coverages of, of the Earth. So we have at least always uh, looked out for two global coverages of the world. And then for challenging terrain, we also had a third and a fourth coverage to get, make sure that there are no uh, typical radar effects like shadow layover in there. So all of this started from the satellite formation and data collection way down the road to the dam editing ensures in various steps the high quality of the world dam. The whole world dam mission, um, tandem mission, the whole world dam product is realized uh, as part of a uh, public-private partnership um, between the German Aerospace Center, which is DLR, as you can see here, and Aerospace and Defense. Uh, while the German Aerospace Center, the German NASA, so to speak, is <laughs> operating the spacecraft as well as the ground segment and taking care of the first raw DSM processing, while um, Airbus is taking care of the, the editing, the creation of the final products that we will offer to the market and the editing the, of, of these products. So we hold the commercial exploitation rights for all the imagery and of course the World Dam product. So the World Dam product line, um, as, uh, what we, this is what we kick off today. So we have the World Dam core as we have, have called it. So it is the unfinished or if you like the unedited digital surface model. Um, there is no additional um, editing or processing being attached, so that means that the product still shows some artifacts, voids. Um, this is very useful for, for clients that might want to do their own editing due to own specifications. The actual real world dam product is the world dam for sure. So this is the fully edited, the finally edited surface model um, with all the water bodies flattened, as you can see right here. Um, the river's running downhill as they should, and you can uh, see a clear outline, a clear uh, outline of the uh, shoreline. So just the, the two compared here, left side, the world, in, in that picture, um, the world dam, the edited product, uh, with the water body smooth, so that's very obvious, and then on the, on the right side, the core, without the flattened water birds, without all the editing done. And then coming soon, a third product that is not launched today, but it's coming soon. Um, uh, it is the actual digital terrain model. So this is um, coming from a surface model just to, to the bare earth product, meaning we would remove uh, edit, uh, by editing the, uh, the man-made objects as well as all the vegetation so that you really end up with a terrain model, a bare earth model. Having said that, I'm already at the end of my uh, short briefing, so I would like to uh, invite you again, as, as Bernard already did, to the uh, uh, World Dam launch reception. It will be hosted by the USGIF, by the German Aerospace Center, as well as us, Airbus Defense and Space, taking place at the Marriott, right across the street, tomorrow evening at 6 p.m.
so thank you for that. Uh, I think we keep going with some questions. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, Clarice, is it, is it okay? Can we open with the questions? Yes, that's, that's okay. Right. You, you take the lead on the... Hi, hi, Amy Butler with Aviation Week. Um, I'd like to, to get an idea of how, who do you have as customers already, or do you already have customers for these products, and um, what is your business model in order to be successful? How much do you have to sell? So, <laughs> start with the first one. <laughs> you should be commercial. I like it. I like your question. So, of course, we, uh, we are very keen uh, promoting this, and you can imagine that we already have a, a deep discussion with a lot of uh, uh, nations uh, on the military side, but also, let's say, uh, uh, a kind of a high number of prospects on, on the commercial side. Uh, so, um, I, I think, uh, uh, of course, um, I think the military will be something which is something very interesting for us. So, uh, uh, many nations are interested. Uh, we, we talk about the, the free products you have seen, the, the core product, but uh, interesting for us is, is also the editing. So, uh, I think uh, the editing uh, brings a lot of added value for the customer. So, maybe Gertrude, you want to add on something on, uh, on this? Uh, Maybe just to mention some industries or so, so uh, the aviation industry, we are in contact with many different um, uh, um, people, then also oil and gas, because it's also a uh, market segment which uh, operates worldwide. So all these um, business operating worldwide, these of course are, uh, let's say, main customers maybe in the future. Okay. So, but of course you can imagine inside Airbus Group we have a lot of things we which are flying and we make them fly <laughs> so uh, this uh, Zulu axis is something which is quite interesting for them in the, in the, in the elevation it could be a missile, it's a helicopter uh, uh, on the simulation for so all, all this uh, I think we, we have a lot uh, a huge uh, internal need for, for, for this work done. so just to close the loop do you have any customers yet or are you looking for your, your not yet signed okay. not yet signed on your uh, digital terrain model, um, I, I know you're removing foliage and trees and all of that. Are you also removing buildings and any kind of infrastructure? Yes. Yeah, we're working on that, um, how to do that. So um, it's worldwide. So this is a point, can we really remove each single house? But yeah, we're thinking about really removing all man-made objects, let's say, and vegetation. Okay. So that's the general principle, and now it's all about the specifications. How far would you want to go in the detail? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, in your opening remarks, uh, you were talking about uh, uh, digital globe and uh, how with respect to digital globe, you want to boost the capabilities uh, this year. In fact, you already have uh, uh, quite a uh, number of uh, uh, satellite imagery in your kit in terms of uh, the variety. You have uh, uh, SAR, you have... Uh, optical all together. So how do you think uh, you are planning to improve your capabilities and also market your uh, products in a much better way to reach uh, uh, the larger uh, uh, audience? I think we have different business models with Digital Globe and uh, I, I envy them because they have one really big customer which we, we don't have yet. So uh, uh, I think this obliges us to run a different, different business model and I think uh, all what you have seen about resolution, uh, 50 true or what, whatever, you know, I think there are many points which are important too. It's the reactivity, it's the way to approach the business. The, the flexibility in service letter agreements. So this is important for customer too. I think we did a tremendous job in the US this year, uh, globally speaking, uh, worldwide. Uh, we were overgrowing the, the market, and uh, I, I think, of course, uh, DG is, 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 a, is a great competitor, and we, we like competition. So, but uh, I think if we, if we can take more market share, we are, we are, we are definitely motivated to do so. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, we we had the first year of play at last year, so I, I think the ramp up was quite impressive. 
uh, we, we have seen a, a, a tremendous uh, months of, of December and this, this trend continues. So uh, I think um, uh, a lot of customers are convinced not just about, let's say, accuracy and, and all this resolution. It's, it, it's much more. And um, I, I think we, we definitely will, will grow in, 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 this, in this direction. So uh, uh, I think in terms of reseller, we do have 140 resellers in this world. That's uh, something which is much more than than uh, DG. I think we are uh, in the regions already today in Asia we are quite strong. Uh, we are strong in the US. We do have a, a, a fantastic perspectives in, in Latin America, in Africa. So uh, I, I, I think it's, uh, it, it, it will be a nice fight this year. Yes, please. Uh, Colin Clark, Breaking Defense. Uh, do you think that you might uh, have a chance to compete with for that single one large customer that uh, DG has, or uh, would that not be practical because of uh, shutter controls and other such things? We try hard, <laughs> uh, but uh, maybe Greg, uh, you uh, maybe you say a word. Mr. Greg Backman is our head of our US. Uh, subsidiaries, uh, Sitecorp, uh, RGS, and IQ in, in Fort Collins and respective in Chantilly. I'll talk loud since I don't have a microphone. I think it's a great question and of course the big contract is what everyone wants to own. But I think what we find is we're able to bring value into that large customer, the US DOD, and the NGA, from different types of capabilities. So I don't know that we'll be, be competing directly against in that enhanced new type contract environment finding other avenues, other partners, and other ways to bring the capabilities of our full scope of constellation and systems into that government customer. So I do expect we'll see some growth in that area. Uh, do you think that would be through resellers, or uh, would it be direct, or? Uh, I think that or, or anything as you well can find. as partnering is how we approach it on, on a fairly consistent basis. So a combination. You mean partnering with a, a U.S. company, or? Yes, partnering with different U.S. organizations. So U.S. customers, you mean, or companies? Companies. Okay, sorry. <laughs> well, almost if, if you had all the above. Okay. It's probably maybe a nice way to... to but, but on that front, I mean, the DOD had flirted with SAR, and <coughs> Lockheed teamed up, like, maybe was it with the Italians, and the Israelis teamed up with Northrop, and nothing came of it that we know of. So what mm -hmm. makes you think... Well, this we currently have contracts in place with the NGA, uh, the Commissar contract, and continuing uh, <coughs> discussions with the customers as well. What we do see is, and what's exciting for us, is a very high demand and customer requirement that's coming from various commands across the globe. And so we continue to work with the uh, NGA and other contracting groups in order to help bring that reactivity and bring that benefit of the radar to that customer group. So are you selling direct to COCOMs? on certain occasions. So how much is your U.S. DOD or intelligence community business worth, can you say? Not as big as digital gloves. <laughs> <laughs> That's a safe bet. Can you say bigger That's than a, a bread box? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we see it through, we believe there's growth opportunity in that marketplace. And again, it comes down to capabilities that services the need of the warfighter and the people on the ground that can benefit in terms of what we're able to bring to bear in the marketplace that may not be as widely available. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, you had a slide comparing your data to LiDAR. Do you consider this as a possible alternative to getting a LiDAR scan? Or are you still more comparing yourselves against the other satellites that are there? Gertrude, would you like to answer this one? Um, I would say in many regions, yes, it really works. Um, it, uh, due to this, uh, as mentioned, very high vertical accuracy from better than two meter in uh, up to a certain slope, um, it really can compete with this and uh, um, let's say what was shown um, was of course not the densest city ever so I wouldn't say it works in Manhattan downtown or so but in an, in an area like this in open areas in uh, um, not as I said not really downtown somewhere I think it's definitely a solution absolutely Do you have a, like a cost ratio versus comparing what a LiDAR scheme would be versus <laughs> Um, the factor of 10, I would say. Yeah. 10 times the cost to yeah. do LIDAR? Yeah. 
Uh, I'm sorry, which way does it go? You're cheaper. ten times cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sorry. sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're, you're right. It's definitely cheaper. <laughs> Makes sense, but... <laughs> so you mentioned that you've got the three tiers of products, the core, the world dim, and then yes. the, the one that you're currently developing, right? So, is the, are the, two, the first two tiers fully available globally? Or do you have, I mean, is this all in a database? Or do I, the client, call you and say, I'm going to invade some little piddly country in Africa and I need data? Like, because you mentioned that you can be reactive. Maybe Andreas can develop on this coverage on the yep. first two and the number three and the number four and the countries which are available in our <coughs> samples. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so what happens is, uh, as the uh, approach of collecting the input imagery was step by step, first coverage, second coverage, and then for challenging terrain, third and fourth coverage, the same goes a little bit like this with the um, processing of the product. So what happens is that the German Aerospace Center, now the data, let's say, let's say that, that the complete input data is available. So there's just a few more weeks left uh, in data collection. That's, that's absolutely minor. So that means we have we are completely get rid of the whole collection period. So that's, that's done. Um, and from there, we now get step by step, every day, like 50 geo cells pre-processed or the, the raw processed product from the German Aerospace Space Center. So then, with that, every day, 50 geo cells approximately, um, we will build our own Airbus internal database. And then a client comes in with a request and we, we have a look at the database. And from there, we, we find the area. It is hopefully available at our database, and then from there we process the, the uh, world damn product. Okay. So that's actually only the pro process, the, the editing processes left. The whole uh, data acquisition that was really the, the, the killer often uh, is gone. And then we okay. fill up the, the, the database, so whenever a client comes in and requests a certain area, we would not only produce edit the certain requested area, but the whole geo cell. We put it in the archive, and therefore we build up the database step by step so that we, let's say, every day or every week, we have more of the world off the shelf, shelf available. Because once it's processed, it goes into the database and every other client can just grab it off the shelf. And did you say that you required four passes, I'm sorry, to, to get all of the, the right elevation data? Or what was that about the four? Yeah, the approach, the approach was uh, from, from the very beginning to collect imagery of the world at least twice globally. So really, one and a half years, first global coverage of data collection, and then another one and a half years, second global coverage. And then we looked at like uh, very, very challenging terrain, mountainous areas, and we decided that to ensure the uh, absolute high quality of the product, we might for these regions do a third and a fourth coverage um, using other pass directions or a different baseline, which is the difference, let's say, the, the, the distance between the satellites. Right. The Canadian Pacific coastline is probably the most challenging, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Cool. There is uh, a lot more challenging areas, so yeah, but uh, Canada is truly, really a hard thing to do. I'm sorry, does that mean that you have a database now for the entire globe that, in theory, you could sell? Yes. Yes. And it exists already? Yes. Okay. But so, I thought you mentioned you were still waiting for, for cells to make right, the DLR. Why. Yeah, you have the, all the, the database now is, let's say, all the imagery. So a DLR like I said, process the raw DSM and delivers to us. And that flows every day. So it really builds up, and then we have the raw DSM sitting with us. The database builds up every day, and from there we edit the final world DEM product and deliver to the client. Yes. Just to clarify one thing, I, I understand the four meter vertical uh, <clears throat> absolute accuracy. But you said two meters relative accuracy, and the imagery really looks like it should be better than two meters relative accuracy. It's a German approach, being decent. Okay. <laughs> Actually, this was the mission goal, and we uh, definitely achieved that. And um, you're absolutely right. We already got feedback from some um, partners saying in their areas they achieved better vertical accuracy than the two meters. What were they? Uh, what were people reporting to you as in this the relative? case, the specific relative? Um, it was it was about one meter. Okay. We are really down to one meter. Yeah, good. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, I understand the complexity of creating the original world gem and how many passes you do have in complex areas. 
are you talking yet in the looking to the future, years down the road, how often do you think you'll update it? That's a question we're asking <laughs> ourselves. So uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think um, we are not very clear on, on, on the answer, but definitely it's, a, it's an option for us. Definitely it's yeah. an option. I'm just anticipating it will come up. Mm. After earthquakes. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. It probably also depends on how, how well the world time product now is being sold, and then um, we'll have to make a decision on that quite soon. I'd like to get a little bit more data about your claim of um, taking market share from Digital Globe. Do you have some numbers to? you know, show how much of the market share you feel you have been able to take away from them? I think we started 2013 with about 3%, quite low, and I think we ended up with about 14 to 15%, if I'm not wrong. Of the market? Okay. Yeah. So, and you still some that? percentage to be taken, no? But you attribute that to play ad? <laughs> Sorry, yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. But we, we stay humble, huh? so it's uh, <laughs> 15 is not bothering too much of a big competitor. And so 